Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Good morning. I guess. I guess I'll just hold it. Um, my name is Kirsten Quinslin. I grew up in Brookfield and in this church. Uh, I was confirmed here in 1998. Uh, after graduating from college, where I went at Fordham University at Lincoln Center, I entered the Jesuit Volunteer Corps uh, in 2008, which was a program uh, that allows young people to work in direct service while also living in Christian community with other uh, like-minded folks. Uh, the Jesuit Volunteer Corps assigned me to a job at Miriam's Kitchen, a nonprofit in Washington, D.C. that serves homeless men and women, and I still work there today. Uh, many of you might know Miriam's Kitchen from the collections of toiletries that the church often donates to us. Miriam certainly knows of you. The many, many boxes of donations that have arrived over the years have been a great gift to our organization, and especially to the homeless men and women who rely on our program. Miriam's Kitchen was founded 31 years ago by a coalition of faith communities and student groups to provide meals for their homeless neighbors. It operates out of the basement of a Presbyterian church in Foggy Bottom, a neighborhood less than a mile from the White House. When it was founded, Miriam's was a small organization focused on serving healthy, natural breakfasts each weekday. Since then, Miriam's has grown dramatically to better address short-term and long-term needs of the chronically homeless community in DC. Our drop-in center now also provides dinner, art therapy, and creative writing programs, and a very busy social service center, which is where I worked for four years as a social worker. We also provide immediate services like clothing and toiletries, uh, the very basics to help people feel comfortable, clean, and dignified. Without donations like yours, we cannot provide the toothbrushes, shampoo, socks, and more that help people living on the streets and in shelters feel like people. We assist in helping make people make connections with other resources in the city, like mental health, substance use programs, applying for food stamps and social security, and job training programs. Um, most people who experience homelessness in their lives are only homeless for a very short time. Um, often with some of the connections and the referrals that we help to make, and sometimes on their own, uh, they're able to return to work, to return to family, or to receive some kind of emergency assistance until they can get back on their feet. Uh, however, there's a smaller subset of the homeless population who are considered chronically homeless, who've been homeless for a year or more, or homeless several times in the last few years. These are the people you might think of when you imagine a homeless homeless person, the woman you see sitting at a bus shelter night and day responding to the voices she's hearing, or a man who's in and out of jails and emergency rooms and the park bench at any given time for years. Um, often, a combination of mental health, substance use, and major medical issues contribute to someone being chronically homeless. The long-term solution to chronic homelessness is very simple. It is to house the people who are homeless. In the past, housing programs have been based on a housing-ready model. Um, so once someone has gotten sober for a year or more, found a job, and is taking medications, then they deserve housing. Um, over the last few years, though, that's shifted um, in helping the people who've been homeless the longest, who have many barriers to finding jobs and getting clean. Um, and so the model has shifted to a housing-first model. And with housing-first, people are matched first with what they need the most to end their homelessness. Literally, they are given a, a home. Once in an apartment, then they have a stable foundation to address substance use, or they're less anxious from living outside, so they're in and out of the hospital yet less, and their mental health gets better. Um, so it saves the community a lot of money as well. Uh, Miriam's Kitchen just heart started a Housing First program this summer, and I serve now as the director of that program. Uh, I can tell you firsthand, Housing First works. It's amazing to see people, some of whom have been on the streets or in shelters for 20 years, uh, move into apartments and start to recover. Uh, one man who will be moving in soon, Gerald, uh, has been homeless for six years. He has a lot of anxiety and depression. He's in and out of the hospital. He's currently in the hospital um, while he um, waits for sort of his apartment to be ready. Um, he told me he's excited to move in because he feels like his self-esteem will get better. Uh, when he can shower every day, when he can keep his clothes clean, uh, when he can get good sleep because he's not worried about getting robbed when he sleeps. Um, he wants to reestablish a relationship with his children, who right now he's too embarrassed to see because of his current, because he's homeless and because he doesn't feel clean. Um, housing First programs like Miriam's are growing around the country. And it's exciting to be part of an organization that is, is yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, too loud. 
Um, it's exciting to be part of an organization that's so passionately addressing both immediate needs and system level solutions. I want to thank you for your continued support of our programs. I have two boxes ready to take back to DC today, um, and one more in Brooks Hall, which I just saw, um, that are overflowing with soap, deodorant, socks, and hand warmers, which will all help people feel safe, comfortable, and clean, and which are critical for helping people feel dignified and hopeful enough to pursue changes that will make their lives better, and hopefully end their homelessness. Thank you again. Because